Peace forever and always. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra. And welcome once again to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. And of course, I am the... Uh, <laughs> My graphics something else like that. <laughs> oh, one of these days, I'm going to learn how to do all that fantastical graphics stuff. I just don't want to take the time. It, it, it's, you know, to get, I can do a video like this. It only takes me a few minutes to do and uh, upload and get it over with. You know, all that fancy editing, you know, I just, that's just not me. <laughs> I'll get into it one day. I am the Angus Snuffin' Up 7, your brother, and uh, hopefully your friend, Talik Ebing Ra. Let's just have a slight conversation, a little conversation, just like if I was sitting in your living room. All right? Is that all right with you guys? Cool. All right. Now, darn it, I said I was going to stop saying now. It's just a habit I got to break. When I was a younger person, experiencing my first uh, jobs, first employment opportunities, I worked at a hotel and uh, I was washing dishes. I never was shame of washing dishes because washing dishes got the bills paid. And if I and if it meant for me to continue to wash dishes today, I'll be the best dishwasher there is. Somebody got to wash the dishes. And hopefully, whoever's washing those dishes, wash them properly. So when you, th those of you who are so high and mighty and think you're so great, when you come to the restaurant, you'll be able to eat off clean sanitary dishes. Y'all just don't know how important clean dishes are. You're more concerned about somebody serving you. <laughs> how stupid you are. They serving you, but since you degrade their occupation of washing dishes, then they serve you on filth. And you might not be able to see the filth. You might not be able to see the old egg that was on the dish or the old steak. But I can guarantee you it's there when you don't wash dishes and handle dishes properly. I know because I was there. Y'all arrogant ass people. So stupid. You got a bachelor's degree, but you're eating old eggs from last week off a plate because you so happy because of who I am. I have my degree and I'm so smart, but you're eating off a nasty dish. Foolish people. That's what happens to you when you're arrogant. And you wonder why y'all stay so sick all the time. But let me say this very quickly, because our time is running out. So I was washing dishes back in the day. And I had a supervisor. And uh, this is what made us respect our supervisor so much. Because even though he was the head man, even though he was our supervisor, he was our quote-unquote boss. This man, he didn't have to. Now listen, let me tell you something now. He didn't have to, but he washed dishes. He mopped the floor. He did everything that we did because he said out of his mouth, I don't want y'all to do nothing I wouldn't do. Just because I'm supervisor, just because I'm a little, my position is a little higher than yours, don't mean that I'm better than you. So we was happy to work for a man like that. And as the Christians would say, God bless him. I love people like that. But you want to know something? American presidents are not like that. American presidents are cowardly people. Here you have Barack Obama, the president of one of the Mightiest nations on earth, but he's not mighty because he can get an order to send more troops 
in Afghanistan, but this cowardly ass ain't going nowhere near the battlefield. George Bush ain't went nowhere near the battlefield. George Bush the first never went nowhere near no battlefield. But these idiots can tell other people and get an order to tell other folks to go in foreign lands and kill and destroy, but they won't do it themselves because they cowardly suckers. I believe the last American president that uh, touched a battlefield was Abraham Lincoln during the Civil War. They had to make Abraham Lincoln stay off the battlefield because he was out there with the boys. Back in the day during Napoleon's day, back during the day during Shaka Zulu's reign, and all these great men prior to these cowards that's living today, great leaders had no problem with being on the battlefield. Matter of fact, that's, that's what sometimes made them a great leader was the fact that they earned a certain respect because they was on the battlefield. They didn't just give an order. They was in the front line. Take me out if you can. I'll run this. Come on. Follow my lead. I'm not going to ask you to do something that I myself won't do. So Barack Obama don't have my respect. You got the nerve to send these young men and women, black, white, Asian, whomever in the United States, you want to send them on a battlefield, but your cowardly ass, scared, you won't do it yourself. This is what the American presidents in recent times do. As soon as they cause trouble, these coward presidents, the first thing they do is make up plans how they're going to escape. We're going to go underground. You can't get the leader. You ain't no damn leader running under the ground some damn where. While the citizens... If America is attacked, why the citizens take the brunt? Thousands or millions of innocent American citizens' lives will be snuffed out for your crap that you started. Because if it was worth anything, your ass would be on the battlefield. But you're not. Barack Obama is a coward. I have no respect for him. Just on that premise. Just on that premise. Malcolm X, one of our great leaders was on the battlefield. He was in the forefront. He wasn't going to ask no FOI to do something that he himself would not do. Louis Farrakhan was in the forefront. All of our black leaders always have been on the forefront. They wouldn't do something that, uh, ask you to do something they wouldn't do. Martin Luther King practiced non-violent. He took a Coke bottle to the head and wouldn't fight back. He did. He was able to take the disrespect and the humiliation. That's how it is when you are a real leader. You're in the forefront. You ain't in the back. But being a coward, the American people allow their presidents to be cowards. Because, see, if I'm willing to give my life for this, then apparently the cause must be worthy. But you see, Barack Obama ain't willing to put his ass in the front line. Get in a get in an airplane, Barack. Go on the battlefield in the front line, Barack. With your soldiers. Since you the commander in chief. Yeah, you a chief, alright. You a chief coward. Scary ass. Wearing panties ass. Half Negro, whatever the hell you want to call yourself. Oh yeah. I'm telling it like it is. Because if a man won't do it himself but ask you to do it, then I will question that man. Just like people don't like being questioned at all. If a person don't like questions, they want you to sign a paper real, real fast. Don't want you to inquire about nothing. Why would you trust somebody like that? Like these stimulus packages. They just want you to don't take the time to check with what's really there. Because in these bills that they write up, they put extra little garbage. And just because you agree with this, don't mean you agree with the rest of the garbage, but it's all in one package. They think they slick. These cowardly American presidents. Roosevelt was not involved in World War II. He was busy being protected. They got these great plans to protect the president. 
Why would you want to protect a coward? They don't go nowhere near the battlefield. Don't ask young men and women who just getting started in their lives to sacrifice their life for their garbage and they're not willing to do so. Your president ass can always be replaced. Cowardly. I have no respect for them. Presidents, they ain't about nothing. Protect them. For what? Scary yellow back. Little sissies. American president. Left. This is your brother Talik Ibarra. They make me sick. And y'all support this kind of stuff. This is your brother Talik Ibarra. This was and is. The reality is tip on earth. Jot down your comments because I know y'all feel just the way I do. Peace.